What's up, team? It's your biggest fan, the real Casadero, and I had I put up a video where I was talking about why I use Windows 10, and someone asked that I do a desk tour, and so I'm going to show you guys exactly uh, this my my setup here. So, for those of you guys who don't know, who've never met me before, my name is the real Casadero, and I am currently a full time uh, YouTuber, web developer, and entrepreneur. And I I I do contract work, but I don't I don't really I try to stay away from it. Um, so my focus right now is building just my own niche sites, um, just different websites around the internet about things that I'm interested in. Um, you can check out my website over at therealcasadero.com team. And that's, that's what I do pretty much. And I make YouTube videos and I upload them. And I also have a online course for people who want to learn web development. Now, this isn't for advanced people is for people who are like right at the beginning of their journey. They've been thinking about learning to code or maybe they have an idea for an app or something and they just don't know where to start. And I, unlike a lot, a lot of course developers, I just focus on the, the core knowledge, the core primary stuff. Um, because when I was coming up and I'm from the South side of Chicago, for you guys that don't know, the South side of Chicago is, uh, is, it was in bad shape when, shape when I was a kid. I was born at, I was born there in the 1980s during the crack epidemic, um, and you know that's what I grew up in. It, it, and it is what it is. I, it, I don't know, team. But uh, but anyway, at one point, my mom was like, "Hey, you know, I got to get out of here." So she had me and my brother pack up all our stuff, and we got on a plane and we flew to Anchorage, Alaska, and that's where I lived from like 1995 to 99. And then I joined the army in 1999 and I was in the army for 14 and a half years. And I came here, I came here to Washington, to the Pacific Northwest uh, in 2004. So, a, a, you know, a long time ago. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit of my backstory team. I, I was in the army, obviously I was a communications specialist. Um, and eventually I ran my own, I ran my own communication section. We had two striker combat vehicles, a uh, couple, couple 50 cal machine guns. Um, there was, you know, my team changed sizes. You know, we went from six people up to 12 people. Um, and then when we deployed, uh, I took over battalion communications and I had a, a battle space, a communications battle space of 92 square kilometers. So basically, um, you know, for, mo for most people who are watching this video, the city you live in, I acted as the, uh, the I, would, I would have been like your telecom company, your phone company. We had, we had cell phone, antennas, we had radio antennas, we had satellite dishes, we had TVs. I mean, like you name it, phones, fiber optic cable. We were supplying internet to people out in the middle of nowhere, uh, using wireless radio systems, all kinds of stuff, team. And I left there, I went into sales for a little bit. I was in car sales. And then I went off into, um, I went off to work as a dev op administrator for a a, con a company that sub that contracts IT people. Um, Insight Global, if you guys are interested, you can go out and apply to that. I'm not, I haven't worked for Insight Global since, you know, since that. That was the first and the last time I worked for them, but I didn't, I got nothing bad to say. My experience was really good. My experience was good, really fantastic working at Microsoft as a, as a dev op administrator. Um, so yeah, man, I'm just, I'm in the tech. That's my thing. But at one point, you know, I, I had got fired from that job and then I, I went into, you know, a little bit of a depression. I was like, I'm going to start my own business. And then eventually I went out and um, I went out and I got another, I got a job as a web developer and I'll make a video about my first day as a web developer for people that are interested. And then I went off and, you know, I had been making YouTube videos and all this stuff all this time, but while I was working that job, I saw what was going on in the business and I realized, I mean, I, I, and I always knew, just like you guys always know, I realized that the owner of the business, um, he was no smarter than me and I was no smarter than him. We just had different skill sets. Um, but the things that I knew about the internet, he didn't understand and he wanted me to focus on some other stuff, but that's not me. I'm a technologist. I'm a computer scientist. I'm a developer. Um, I've devoted my life to this game team. I gave, you know, 14 years of my life to, to the United States army. Um, and, you know, I realized at that point that, you know, with all my experience, my leadership experience that, you know, I should be out on my own doing my own thing. And the universe had been calling me to do it. So I did. Right. And I'm going to tell you guys, it's not easy. You just don't quit your job and go out and start a business and, and try to buy all this stuff. Um, there is definitely a better way to go about it than the way that I went about it. But, you know, each of us have our own story. I'm just here to share my story with you. Um, and, you know, you take from that what, what you may. 
Um, and, it, and I mean, before you make any moves, just think it over and, and, you know, you make your own decisions for you team. But so, so basically what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to keep it. So like, um, so, so I go in some kind of order and it makes sense. And I, and I catch everything. I don't, I don't want to miss anything. And I'm going to start with probably like, what's the most important thing to me in this whole setup right here. And that's this sign up here that says the real Casadero, because me and my wife, we were going through some things and, and I mean, you know, not relationship wise, but, but marriages are hard. Just so you guys know, I'm not saying like we, we argue and we fight and stuff like that, but I love my wife dearly. She is probably, I mean, she's my best friend. And, um, and so when I, when I first started uploading videos to YouTube, it was when I was selling cars and I had, we were doing good. We were making good money for a long time. And then boom, you know, I was in the reserves. I had to go off and do some training. And when I came back a month later, it was hard for me to build those numbers up again. And we were losing, uh, we were losing money. We were using our savings to live and it got real tough. Uh, and we had to rely on our family. So, you know, I've just, I've just been blessed in so many ways in my life team. And so I don't want you to think that like some people see stuff like this and they go, oh man, you know, this guy, he's on YouTube and he's making all kinds of money. That, that is definitely not the case team. Um, it will be, you know, and it was at one point in the past, but th there's ups and downs, right? So we were, we were struggling at the time and then boom, the universe called me to work at Microsoft and I went there and the pay was great. And it was fantastic. Now, I didn't buy any of this stuff while I was working there. I bought all this stuff after that. But like I said, when I was selling cars, I started the YouTube channel and the channel just started to grow. And I think it was I think it started. I think it was growing because I was making content like this. But I was on a little bitty surface computer um, and or my MacBook. And I was just laying on my living room floor recording videos. And as the numbers grew, she would buy me different things. And I think this was probably like a birthday gift. And she bought this because my my name was the real Casadero. And it blinks and all kinds of stuff, team. It's super cool. But that reminds me of like not only why because I don't just do it for my family. I do it for I do it for for my for my viewers, for my subscribers, for my fans out there, but I do it for my 16-year-old self because because there's a lot of kids out there who are like me. They're growing up in the ghetto and, and you know, I, th I think back to when I was that age and I didn't, I never thought about getting out beyond that. Like everything on TV was fictitious. It was fake to me, right? It didn't seem like the real world. And there's a lot of people living like that right now. So I'm just, I'm just here to tell you guys, like you can do it. There's, if you got the mindset in, in, you know, so you can subscribe to the channel and watch my videos and watch my future videos. I'll talk more about that stuff, team. But that sign right there, that's where that sign came from. I didn't make that. My wife made it for me and I put it right there so I can see it. Um, and then I record my videos, you know, somewhere in this area over here. And so that sign shows, hey, I'm the I'm the real Casadero team. And this office, this whole office setup is in my bedroom. The camera is actually on top of my bed. We got a big, huge king size bed in here. And I used to have all this stuff in what's now my son's room. Not all this stuff, like, cause I didn't have all this stuff back then. I just had a desk, my surface book. And, uh, uh, I think I just had one monitor back then, but it was in my, my son's room. And then me and my wife, we had a daughter and it was like, Hey, we want to give these guys, you know, their rooms. So I moved all of this stuff over here when my, when my, when my daughter was old enough to, um, when she, cause she used to sleep with me and my wife, when she got old enough to sleep in her sister's room, um, or any room in, like we, they have rooms, but they just sleep anywhere they want sleep on a, in the living room, wherever. Right. But, um, but we moved all the stuff out of my son's room and then we set it up over here. And this room was set up completely different team. It was, um, I always dreamed about having it just like this, you know, having you, the, the exact setup you see was in my mind for like five, six years before I even did any of this stuff. So over here, I have a bookshelf and then there's shelves all along this wall. I'm not going to spin the camera and go through all that stuff, but there's just shelves. And some of you guys will see them in my videos if you subscribe, but I got a lot of books. I got books on all different kinds of things. I got books on programming. I've got books on, on entrepreneurship, books on politics, books on finance, books on, uh, investing books on money management books on, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Like here, there's a book, 50 economic ideas, Like right? This is just like, maybe like a ph philosophical book with some, you know, facts mixed in about the market and stuff like that. I've got a book over here. I love capitalism by Ken 
uh, Langan. I haven't even, even read it. Uh, 12 Rules for Life from Jordan Peterson. Uh, Piketty's Capital. This is a thick book. I haven't read this one yet either. But my goal is to uh, to read more. I've, I've read a lot of these books cover to cover. I read The Way of the Turtle cover to cover. Um, and I don't have all these books on my website, team. That's, what I'm, that's one of the things that I'm working on right now is just putting all these books. Because to some of these books, I mean, they're just like, I'm mad. But then a lot, you know, there's other books that have really had an impact on me, like um, like Principles by Ray Dalio, Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. I don't believe in everything that's in Money Master the Game. But, you know, like I said, team, my my goal is to just share the information, share my story and you know, you take that information with a grain of salt, do your own research and just, you know, some people, if you're religious, you can pray on it. Um, if, if you're not, then, you know, you sit and you ponder and the answers will come to you and tell you which moves you need to make, what direction you need to go, team. And so up these two top monitors that you see right up here at the top, one of them off because ever so often when I start the computer, my video card doesn't turn on all the monitors for every reason. Um, and I just have to reboot and then they all come up. But there's two, these two monitors are Dell's. They're older monitors. The resolution's 1280 by, by, no, 1290 by 1080. I think that's the resolution. And um, no, 1920, I'm sorry, 1920 by 1080 is the resolution of these two monitors. And they look really good. I've had them for a long time. I bought them back in like 2000, 2013, 2000, maybe 2012, something like this. Sometime between 2012 and 2014, I bought these these two Dell monitors and they used to sit down here on my desk and underneath those monitors, we got two, um, I don't even know the resolution. They're two 4k, 4k monitors by Samsung. And when I was building this computer and I went to hook up these two monitors, I didn't have all of the cables and adapters I needed. And I went to the store and I was like, Hey, I need this, you know, connector. And, <clears throat> and the guy who was working there, he was telling me about frame rates and all this stuff. And, uh, they had these two monitors. They're like 650 bucks a piece, but they were on sale for, for $300. And so I bought two of them. And then once I set them up, I was going, Hey, you know, it'd be cool if these other two monitors work. And then I went out and I bought all the connectors and the adapters and I hooked them all up. And now, and now they all work. That's why I have four monitors, but is it, is it necessary? No, not really. I can do most, I do most of my work on one monitor anyway. Like when I'm recording the tutorials and stuff, it's all done on this monitor right here. But then on the other monitors, I can have stuff that I want to read and I'll have like the, 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 the streaming information or the recording information up here. I'll have like any sort of reference material that I need for a, for a course that I'm doing or something like that. I'll have it over on this monitor or that monitor. Um, and then just when I'm chilling and hanging out, my wife wants to watch something different in the living room or my kids want to watch something else or, I'm, you know, I'll just kick back in the chair and I'll just put, you know, a show up on one of these on one of the top monitors. And then I'll work on one of these other monitors team. And there's going to be there's links. I'll, I'll try to put links to all of this stuff in the description below in case anybody wants to pick up any of this stuff. But it's, it's pretty standard stuff, team. It's just, you know, I organized it in a different kind of way, I guess. Um, and then we got these monitors and they're sitting on this desk we bought at Walmart when I was in the army, like years and years and years ago. And it's completely messed up. It's like a jacked up desk. I've thought about buying a new desk, but this one, this one just sort of works for me right now. Uh, maybe one day I'll switch to a standing desk. I don't know. Um, but right now it just works. It's the right height and, uh, it is what it is. And what I did is at Lowell's, they have this vinyl and I learned about this from my wife and my daughter because my daughter has a desk in her room and it's completely painted and everything and they put marble on it. And so I learned about this paper from my wife. And what I did is when I was switching up the room, I, I decided to make the desk top white. And so I covered it all in this vinyl. So that's why the top of the desk is white. And then we have these Bose speakers. These are just Bose. Uh, I don't even know what they call them, com companion comfort or something. Like I said, there'll be links below, but these are just Bose speakers. They cost me like maybe like a hundred bucks, something like that. And what I did is I bought some blue masking tape, like painter's tape. And I just covered, I covered the front of them. And on both of them, I covered the knobs over here in the headphone jack. And then I just spray painted them white. So that's, that's how I got white speakers. I don't know. Maybe you can buy them white. I looked before I painted them and I couldn't find any. And so I just painted mines. And then on, on top of them, I have a right code drink coffee sticker that I, I made this when I was in school. And this, this is a, this is a good story because 
I had thought about making a sticker for like months and months and months. And then one day I, I, you know, something just told me, make the sticker, just make it. And, uh, and so I, I knew illustrator and I just sat down and I just made this sticker. And then something said like, like literally a voice was like, you know, have this sticker printed. And I went to the internet. I went to a, a site called uh, sticker mule and I had them make these stickers. And I got, you know, I think I got like 20 or 30 stickers at the time. And I gave, I stuck them all over everything. I put them, you know, I gave them away to people. I would leave stickers on buses and on trains just so people could find them and stuff like that. I've mailed stickers in the mail to people who've, who've contacted me on Twitter and stuff like that. And then now I, I have these stickers on my website, uh, another website that I have out on the internet, writecodedrinkcoffee.com. If you go there, there's stickers, there's a mug. The mug's not in here right now, but there's a mug. There's, uh, I got shirts and stuff there. I got the hats that I wear, like the hats that I wear when I'm, when I'm on YouTube, like this hat right now, you can buy on the website, stuff like that team. Next to that, I have this surface dial and I don't even use it because, um, it doesn't, it, 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 it'll work with any computer, but it has very limited functionality. I mean, maybe you can program some more stuff into it, but Right now, basically all it does is turn the volume up and down. And maybe when I'm in Photoshop, if I remember, I'll use it to like zoom in and zoom out or something like that. But it's just, some, it's something, I thought it was cool when Microsoft came out with it. It was just another thing to buy and I had a bunch of money, so I bought it, but I've never really used it, team, to be honest. This, this is just, it's just there. Um, over here, I've got, there's a, you probably can barely see it, but I have this little stand. It's like, it looks like a little computer. And inside of it is my Apple watch. And typically it'll tell the time. And it, so it looks like a little old, like a little old school computer cause it'll have like this little green clock on there. Right now the watch isn't turning on for whatever reason. I don't, oh, there it is. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's just a little computer uh, that holds my Apple watch. And again, the Apple watch, another thing that I bought that is not really necessary that I don't need. You have to charge it every day. And um, I hardly ever wear it. And when I do wear it, all I ever do is tell time on it. I've never really used it for anything but to just tell time. It, there's, you can put apps on it, people do, um, but I, 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 I've only used it to tell time really, team. Uh, and then here we got my keyboard, it's a Corsair. Uh, I can't remember the model number, it's just a white keyboard. Uh, and, and again, the descriptions are in the links below. Um, and it has RGB lights on it. And I wanted everything to be white because I don't know, like it just makes me feel good. This room is like a light blue. Um, and so every, so the white goes with the light blue very, very well. And when I come in here, I just feel relaxed, right? Um, it's a very calming place. And that's what I wanted to build. Like it wasn't, it was, I didn't always, it didn't always feel this way when I came in here because I had this vision in my head of what I wanted it to be. Um, and then when I achieved that vision, that's when it was like, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a getaway for me. I come in here and I'm just in my own space and I can do my own thing. And when I have my desk all cleaned off, I can focus. And so on my, on my desk team, I've got the, uh, I've got a, a Corsair mouse pad, RGB mouse pad. It just glows. Not really necessary, right? None of this stuff is necessary. It's just, it's nice to have. I mean, it looks cool. It makes me feel you know, uh, very excited when I'm at work and stuff like that. Um, you know, and it looks cool in the videos, to be honest, like if I'm shooting a video and I got all this stuff in the background, it, it looks cool. It, it gives, it, it gives me a little credibility, I guess. Maybe some people see it and they go, okay, all right, this guy must know what he's talking about. He's got all these books and all this stuff. Um, but it's just cool, man. It's just stuff that makes me feel good. Uh, behind, behind the mouse pad and the keyboard, I got this little rock. This is a cool story. It's a gold rock. And my son, he wanted to, um, he wanted, he need he wanted money so he could buy little toy trains. And we, me and my wife, we've been working on, you know, and, and, and I, I, I'm the technology guy. So I'm the guy typically who brings in the money like 99% of the time. And, um, and so when I decided to leave my job and go full time and like really, you know, turn this, this thing that the universe has been calling me to do into, into my actual living, you know, we have to cut back on spending and stuff like that. So my son, he wanted to buy some trains and what he did was he came up with the idea to sell rocks and he went out and he got some spray paint. He's got these rocks. He's an eight year old and he spray painted these rocks gold and he started selling them and he still sells them. He's made about 200 bucks so far. Um, just selling rocks. And I'm really proud of him because 
I, I believe that it was sort of my mindset and my belief system in, in, in all the things that I've done that showed him, hey, man, if you want something, you can go get it. You don't have to wait for somebody else. And that's what he did. Right. He went and got his money and he's made all this money. And he has it like he's, just, he's laying all over his room like he's a drug dealer or something. He doesn't even spend it. Right. He, he wanted this money to buy trains. He hasn't bought any trains with the money. He's bought a couple things. He's bought stuff for his his sisters, which is super awesome. Um, but, yeah, he's just hanging on to his money. He's not really spending on anything. So I have that rock here just because it's cool. Um, I wasn't even his first customer, I just, <laughs> which is wild, man. Like He just. You know, it's a cool story. So I got that here just um, just because it's cool and my son made it. And I mean, it's a gold nugget, big old gold nugget on your desk. It just looks cool. Um, and I look at it and it reminds me of that story. And it reminds me to just like, hey, man, right? Like, you know, the world's a stage and you're the actor. Just have some fun. Right. Don't take every don't take it too serious. And if you believe in yourself and you have faith, like you'll get to where you're going. And that's sort of been like the story for me. Um you know, all the way up until me recording this video right now. So that's why I keep that rock there, team. Right over here, I got the, uh, I got a Blue Yeti, Blue Yeti microphone. I bought this microphone years ago, team. I bought this microphone about two or three years before I started actually making, sorry about that. The camera only records 20 minutes at a time. So, um, but when I first started making YouTube videos, I was just using my, my laptop, and so I wasn't even using this microphone. I tried to use it a couple times. I didn't like the way it sounded when I would when I would type on the keyboard. It would vibrate the stand and all this stuff. Not this stand here. Um, and I'll talk more about this, but it would vibrate the stand that the mic came with. So I didn't even use it. But uh, I bought it specifically to record. You know, I didn't even know, I didn't even know what I wanted to record at the time, team. But the universe had me, you know, go out and buy this microphone. And I had it and I had it and I had it. And then, boom, like when the time came for me to make the move. I had every, I had everything I needed. I didn't have to go out and buy anything else. I had, I had all the stuff. Um, and I accumulated all this stuff over time. Like I bought this mic before I had the monitors, I think. Um, and then, you know, one monitor and two monitors and then, you know, all this stuff, you just accumulate this stuff over time. And for me, it's wild. Like the experience is really gone. Like, you know, it doesn't happen all at once. It happens in little increments. And then one day you're kind of, you're just, you're just there. And then, and then when you're there, you're able to go out and buy, you know, all this crazy extravagant stuff at once. But this is all extra stuff. Like nobody really needs all this stuff, team. Um, for the main, the main part of what I do is web development and, and, and coding and stuff like that. Um, no, you can do it on any, on any old laptop. And you can stream on any laptop too. My most successful video my most successful video on this channel to date was me just in front of my laptop using the laptop camera and the laptop microphone. I was using, uh, I think it, I think it was, a, it, it, it might've been a surface. I think it was a Microsoft surface. Um, but it may have been a MacBook too. I'm not positive, but it was just a regular, and it wasn't just a regular laptop team. That, that's, I just want to convey that fact that I, it was, I didn't use a, I had a mic. I didn't use the mic. I had, I had a webcam. I didn't use the webcam. I just used what was built into the computer. And that's my most popular video. And it's just me in front of the camera laying on my living room floor with my face to the screen recording. And, you know, that's that's how it went down, team. Uh, and then, so we got the microphone here and it's on a Rode microphone arm. And it has, so none of this stuff comes all together, right? The microphone came on a separate stand. I had to buy this thing. This thing is like 50 bucks. It's a pop filter. So when you talk, your P's and your, your um, there's another, I don't know, your P, I, I don't know the other letter, but it's supposed to muffle that, that, that P sound, that, like all the, you know, any pops or anything. And then this right here is a shock mount. So if I, if I, if I hit the desk or something like that, the vibration doesn't reach the microphone, the micro. So the microphone is like in this little independent space and it's separated. It's, it's held on, uh, with these rubber bands and it, the whole mechanism is designed to stop vibration from actually reaching the microphone and then getting into whatever you're recording team. So this is, I mean, this is cool, but I had to buy that thing separate. This, that was like a hundred bucks. And then you get the arm, the arms like a, you know, I think maybe it's 50 bucks on Amazon right now. And there's other arms that are cheaper, but the reason why I went with this one is because it was the one that everybody had reviewed. And I, I followed this podcast, Entrepreneur on Fire. And I think he had this set up at one point. I'm not positive, team. I think he had this set up at one point. But I knew that this arm, 
This was the arm that was able to hold this microphone. This microphone is pretty heavy. It's a heavy microphone. And I'm not sure if a cheaper arm would do it. And so I didn't want to go out and spend you like 25 bucks or 30 bucks and then get, get it. And maybe it works a couple days and then the arm isn't strong enough to hold it. And it just sort of droops down all the way until it's sitting on a desk or something. Right. But this arm, this setup has been like this for about two years right now. Um, and it, 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 it holds the microphone just fine. So that's why I have the road arm and it's just attached to the side of the desk with the clamp. No big deal team. And then we get over here to, uh, to this setup right here. And there's a lot of cool stories behind this stuff. I got some bows where right here, this is a, this is a Cortana voice thing. And, um, I bought it when I was working at Microsoft at the time. And a lot of people believe that, you know, I like Microsoft because I was working there and sure. Why not? Yeah. Why not? I worked there in the building. I saw the logo every day. It was my dream, right? From, from 16 on, like I never thought about like, Hey, I want to go work, you know, on the Microsoft campus or something like that. But we have been using windows 95 for years. I've read all of red, red Bill Gates book, the road ahead. Um, and, you know, I was studying what Microsoft had done, how they became a company. I've been studying, you know, all the computer companies, Apple, Microsoft, Oracle, stuff like this is just in me. Like, it's just a part of who I am. Um, and so I just I just I just like technology and Microsoft is kind of like the the they consider like the big evil character. And they put out some cool stuff. They do some cool stuff. And mainly I like Bill Gates. Like he he made a bunch of money. Sure, of course. But he's spending that money all around the world now. His plan is to spend all his money and be broke when he dies or some craziness like that. Um, <laughs> and just and just have the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation live on. And I mean, he's doing some cool stuff. They've like cured malaria or something like that. He has this apparatus, this apparatus that he he's setting up in all these third world countries that turns uh, that turns human uh, excrement into electricity and clean drinking water is, I mean, it's just, he's doing amazing stuff. Um, and then Microsoft makes it like super easy for developers. They got Azure, uh, visual studio, visual studio code. Um, you know, and, uh, all, uh, all of the coding stuff you can use for free. There's free versions of it. Um, unfortunately no free versions of Microsoft office or anything like that. I, at least I don't think, I don't know. Um, but even still, like if you go to school and you're co if you're in college, they'll give you you get access to all their stuff. A lot of universities pay so their students get free Microsoft Office and all the all the all the Microsoft software is free. When I was in school, everything that Microsoft made, I got for free. Right. All of their compile, anything, anything, anything that they made was was essentially free for me, team. Um, so I thought that was super cool. Um, but of course, the universities, the school or whoever they're paying for that stuff, you know, but I just. This is like Microsoft and it's a little different. It looks cool. It's like an art piece. It's, it, it just sits there and it works. Cortana, I can say, hey, Cortana. She's unplugged now because sometimes like when I say her name, she just starts talking. And as you can see, like I'm talking about Cortana, like she's a real person, like we hang out on the weekends or something. And we do. We hang out every weekend. She lives with me all the time. Um, but we also have um, we have Google, Google voice pod things all around the house. There's one in my son's room, one in my daughter's room. There's one in the kitchen. My wife uses it to cook and to set timers and stuff. My kids ask questions. So they want to know something. My, my son's really into presidents. So whenever he has a question about the presidents, he's like, hey, Google, you know, when was Ulysses S. Grant born? Or when, you know, did he become president? Or what was his policies? And, so, and it's like eight year old kid. So it's super cool to have all this stuff around the house. And I just have Cortana in here and she makes a fantastic headphone stand. And on top of, on top of Cortana are my, my great, my, my grandfather-in-law's, uh, Bose studio headphones. And the reason I have them is because he passed away, uh, you know, just recently. And it, I mean, you know, over the past year, my life has been crazy. I got fired, right? I'm on un unemployment. I'm trying to find clients, trying to start a business. I'm struggling at it. Um, and then my, my father, and my grandfather-in-law dies. And, you know, I, I, he's one of a very important person in, in my life, very, very important person in my life. So, you know, I, I got his headphones, uh, you know, I was going to go out and buy some headphones. And then I think I, my, my wife, she came home with these headphones. She said, Hey, these were grandpa's headphones. So I cherish them. They are another prized possession of mine. So all this other stuff could go away. If I got my sign and I got my headphones, I can start all over again. I know that team. Um, 
So, and then next, next to those are some Plantronics headphones. And I got those when I was working at Microsoft. And there was a, there was a woman who worked there and, and yeah, I'm just nice to everybody. And she was the supply person. And, you know, we would have to go through her to, to get all of our, to get all of our stuff. And, and, uh, I mean, just super, super nice. And I had these headphones I was using for work and they were crappy. They were very cheap. And I was going to go buy some headphones. And I saw her one day and because I was working with other engineers in the building and they, they all had these same kind of headphones. So I went to her and said, Hey, I see all these engineers with these headphones. And I got these really crappy headphones that I got for my company. I'm here. I'm doing the same thing as all these other guys. May I have some headphones? She said, sure. Right. And she, you know, she signed me out some headphones and I got, I got my headphones. Um, so that's why I got two sets of headphones here. They, the Plantronics sound really good. They're not over the ear headphones, um, but they're wireless. I think the wireless headphones are better for recording and stuff like that. But I have those there. And when I, when I get a phone call or something and I want to go outside, I can just grab those and put them on and they pair to multiple devices. So they're paired to both my phones. And so no matter what phone I'm on, if I just turn them on and put them on, and they'll automatically connect to my phone and I can instantly go outside and take a phone call. They sound really good. They got noise canceling, stuff like that, team. And then uh, all of this stuff is sitting on top of my actual computer. This is an NZXT case. Uh, I can't remember the model number of it, but the first time I saw this case, I fell in love because of this white bar in here. And I thought that was super cool. And I bought the case. I bought this case and I had this case for a year sitting on this shelf. There was the, all the books were over somewhere else and it was just sitting there. So every time I came in here, I would see this empty case and I would tell myself, Hey, I'm going to build this case. I'm going to build this case. I'm going to build this case. And another reason why I got, you know, I, I just like the white. I think the white is very clean. There's this show I watch called billions and the, the protagonist though, the main character, he is, um, if they're the same thing, if I, if I'm wrong, somebody correct me. Uh, but he's like, his whole office is white. Right. And so, and I, I just, I just like the, I like the white feel of things. I don't like to wear white clothes, but a white room, a well-decorated white room makes me just feel so empowered and excited and in, in confident and stuff like that. So I really love this case. And then inside of this case, I just put a little plant to be different. I had, a, I had grass in there. Like there was grass inside of this, inside of this case, but I took out a piece um, but I have, I just, I keep that plan in there. It just adds a little pizzazz to the case. Then of course I got all the RGB lights and stuff. And the setup that I have going on for this computer team is I've got a, uh, it's a, it's a Ryzen, I think it's a seven. I, th I think that's the model number Ryzen seven. It's got eight cores on it. And, um, I mean, it's a pretty, it's a fast computer, right? I, I've never, I've never been using all eight cores at the same time, at least as far as I know. Uh, and, th and that's, of course, the processor is the most important thing. Over here, you see these four RGB lights. That's my RAM. I got, it's 64 gigs of, I think, 3200 DDR, DDR RAM. And uh, the pair, it's, it's set up really good. I've never maxed out, the, you know, the 64 gigs, but it allows me to do a bunch of stuff at the same time. I can, I can be, I can be editing, a, editing a movie, uh, writing code. I could be rendering a movie, writing code and watching something on Netflix all at the same time. And then that's just like, I don't know, like I'll look at the monitor and it'll not the monitor, but the, um, the performance monitor, the machine and it'll be like, Hey man, you're, you know, you're, you're using, you know, a hundred percent of your processor or something like that. And it's like, I can still go more, but I'll only be using like, you know, a quarter of my Ram or something like that. And I've done 3d rendering on here. I've, like you name it, I've been able to do it. But again, you don't need all that stuff. You start small and you just build up. That's why in the Code365 Startup Lab, I just focus on the core fundamentals. If I had, a, I've, I feel that if I had a focus on that stuff, like right when I got out of the army, focus on the four core fundamentals and then focused on building things as I learned stuff, you know, build a website that looks like Louis Vuitton, build a website that looks like Mercedes Benz, build a website that looks like, you know, BlackRock Capital, build a website and just building that stuff. Um, and then really focusing on SEOing those things and repurposing them for my local market that I would be light years ahead of the game team. I would have been able to sell these websites off to businesses or sell them leads or, or do whatever. And that's what I do now. Um, but anyway, that's that team underneath that. I've got the, uh, I got a GeForce RTX 2060 video card. It's got four ports on the back. 
Uh, I think two of them are HDMI ports and then the other two are, are something else. Um, I wanted to have two of these cards. Like that was my dream at one point, get two of these cards. But one card has been more than enough for me. I'm able to get all four monitors on it. I don't believe I could add more monitors. Like if I add another card, I could add four more monitors. But I, I don't even know what I would do with them, team. This has just been more than enough for me right now. And I'm super happy with this whole setup and like how everything is just pieced together. Down next to that, I have a little USB port for extra USB ports. So I got a bunch of stuff plugged in there and you can't see them like really because they're behind this chair. So in this chair, I bought off of Amazon. It's like a $50 chair, but it's really nice. It's white. Uh, the back of it is white. It is called a uh, Habata. Habata is the company that makes the chair. And then if you spin it around, it's got this, this footrest that comes out. I rarely ever use it though. But it's there. It's cool. Um, it comes in handy from time to time, but it's not it's not like a regular thing that I use every day. Maybe I'll use it. You know, I'll be working all day and I'll forget to eat. And so I'll grab some food and then I'll come in here and I'll put out the rest and I'll kick my feet up and I'll recline and I'll just sit there and eat my bowl of cereal or noodles or something like that in my chair and, you know, watch something on Netflix. Um, so, like I said, like all this stuff is just set up to make me productive and make me feel good about myself and who I am and, and you know what I'm doing and what I'm trying to accomplish. And uh, it calms me down. I've, I've got some issues from my time in the military and all this stuff just sort of, you know, just calms me down. So I spend a lot of time, a lot of time in here, team. And this, this whole computer setup is sitting on top of just the little shelf that I got over at, at Target. I put it together and it's kind of sort of organized, not, you know, I've got over here, I've got my, my any, I've got notebook paper, and this is like high quality notebook paper. I don't really, not notebook paper, but printer paper. I've, I've only had to print a few things from it. And I, I, ha, I, I originally set this whole thing up for running my business. And then when I went out and I started to get clients, I found myself trying to convince people of stuff a lot. And that's not, I, I spent uh, two years doing that when I was selling cars, right? People coming to buy a car and you're trying to sell them a car. And me personally, I spent a lot of time trying to inform people you know, so, sometimes to my detriment, but I did, I did, I did well in car sales. I made, I made good money, not as much as I could have made, but I definitely made more than my peers. So, so I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy in that sense, team. But I set this all up for that, but it's sort of, it's worked out for me. I've got three hard drives down here. Uh, I think they're each two terabytes. And this is where I store all of the, the, the raw files and footage from all of the videos that, that you see on YouTube. And one of them, two of them are almost full and then one's like almost completely empty or something like that. And if we bounce back up here into this machine, in this machine, I've got I've got a um, I've got a solid state SSD in the back. You can't see it. I think it's a terabyte of space. And then in the front, I have two uh, M M.2 uh, one terabyte SSD cards and one it, it houses the main operating system. And then the one in the back is just extra space. Um, I think I, I think I, at one point I had like two versions of Linux installed on it through Microsoft's uh, subsystem for Linux. And then on this front one, there's um, it's my D drive. I call it the staging area. And that's where I store stuff that I'm working on because it's a super fast drive until I want to archive it down in one of these other drives. And there's like no real like they're kind of organized, but there's like no real super workflow that goes along with that team. I just know like I start a project on my desktop or in a special folder on my computer somewhere and then I'll work on it. And if I want to like typically I'm working with a lot of video, so I'll put it on the D drive, maybe. Right. If I, if I need space on my C drive, I'll put it on the D drive and then I'll just it'll it'll sit there and I'll work on it out of there. And when the project's complete, I'll take it and I'll archive it. If it's code, if I'm working on something with code, then I'll I'll push it up to GitHub and I have. Yeah, I pay for a GitHub plan. So I've got my public repos and I got private repos for like clients or maybe anything else that I'm working on stuff that I don't want people to see um, or I don't want them to see yet or just uh, things that I don't want in the, like, you know, the public eye. But the code ends up on GitHub. So whenever I need anything, I can just go up to GitHub, do a quick search and clone that down and I'm good to go. But all the videos and stuff, they stay here. And I would I would put those in the cloud, too. It would just it just it would take so long to re-download anything if I needed it. But to be honest, there's a lot of stuff here that I've recorded over the years that I will probably never look at again. Right. You know, 
Um, and then I've got like these bins and each of these bins has some, you know, just knickknacks in them. I've got a couple rulers. Uh, these are like uh, architectural drafting rulers with different measurements on them in case I want to draw something and sketch something out. I don't use them at all. Right. But they're there when I need them. And then I've got I've got some more solid state drives like this is 120 gig. There's another one in here. Um, just, you know, different knickknacks and stuff that I might need here. I have and all the all the bins are like that. Like this one's empty. All that it has. So when I was when I was going out and I was doing client proposals, I had these things. And so I would print out my proposal, put it in one of these folders and slide these things on. Looks looks super professional. But um, definitely not necessary. You don't need all this stuff, team. This is stuff that like you you see people in videos and stuff talk about, and, it, and we could get into that at some other point. Uh, down here, I've got I've got some uh, some envelopes. They're like they're pre they're pre postage envelopes. So all I so whenever I need to mail something, I just write down the address to where it's gonna go. I put it inside and I drop this in the mailbox. I don't have to put any stamps on them. I bought these. I bought these a while back, and this is what I use to mail stickers. Like somebody buys, a, you know, a couple of stickers, boom! I'll just drop them in here, throw an address on there, throw it in the mailbox, and then in a in like three to four days they'll have their stickers team. And you can get those over at uh, RightCodeDrinkCoffee.com. Uh, I got a, I got another webcam next to that, and I'm going to be using this webcam in another project that I'm working on. I got a Mac Mini that's been just sitting in my closet doing nothing for a long time. So I'm going to use the Mac Mini in this webcam for a special project. I don't even know if I'm going to talk about it on this channel, to be honest. I want to build it and see if it works, and then maybe I'll tell you guys about it. Uh, and then next to that, so on top of my paper, I've got a couple notebooks. I have notebooks everywhere. I've been a notebook fan for you know my entire life. Just something about paper. Um, and writing on paper just makes me feel good. And it's always been that way. And so I have all these notebooks, but none of them are full. Like I've never like filled up a notebook. I'm like, oh, I got to get to another notebook again. I just like notebooks. I just got this fetish for notebooks. I bought this planner because it looks super cool. It says you're you are a badass. I put the right code drink coffee sticker on here. Um, and you're supposed to plan all your days in here. And I bought it in August, but I used it for two days and I haven't used it since. Um, but typically right now. My, my, I know what I'm going to do every day. I know exactly my schedule is the same, right? You know, I wake up, um, and then I'll, I'll work on some tutorials, make a YouTube video, YouTube video goes to YouTube tutorials, go over to my team. Again, it cut off, gives me about 20 minutes of recording time, but the, um, the courses go on to teachable and, uh, and that's it. And right. And, and I can stop working anytime I want. I'm typically working a lot because I'm trying to grow a business. I'm trying to grow a YouTube channel, grow a business, grow a subscriber base. Um, and then just put as much content out there as I can. So if anybody does come along and they need like consulting or stuff like that, then, you know, they, I can show them all, Hey, I got this over here. I got this over there. This is what I do, but I pretty much make my own schedule team. And, um, and so like, this is, this is cool. But it's not it's not really necessary. I have come to realize that uh, if it's important, you'll just do it. And in me, I had to get to a point where the person I wanted to be and the things I want to do and the way I want to live had to become more important than everything else. So that's what my I focus on where I'm going. And that dictates to me the actions I need to take. So um, if I'm always thinking about, you know, this lifestyle that I want. When, when it comes time to like watch Netflix or something in the back of my mind, it's like, hey, you could be working on this other thing or you could be doing Netflix. So this I haven't really had a need to write stuff down. Now, what's what's amazing is when I was writing stuff down, I was probably less productive than I am now. And I was writing stuff down because those are tasks that come from other people. So when you're in a job, you know, you got meetings to go to, you put that stuff in there. You got, you know, things to do for your boss, you put those in there. Um, but when it comes, it, at least my experience, when it, when it's come to, to me doing things for myself and for my family, this hasn't been, it's cool. It looks cool, right? It may help some people. Um, and then, you know, to be honest, I, I've kept, I've kept journals and task managers and to-do lists my entire time throughout the army. So it may be, that just at some point that I got really used to doing it and, and my brain just reorganized itself and I don't need this stuff anymore.
Like it's just in my, not I, like I, I don't recommend you try to store anything in your head. If you got an idea, you definitely positively need to write it down. If you have a dream or, you know, an aha moment, you got to write that down team. But for my day to day doing stuff like this hasn't been, you know, I, like I said, I don't use it that much. If I can have an appointment or something, I'll just tell Siri. I'll say, hey, Siri, schedule an appointment for this day at this time. And it goes into my phone and I don't even have to think about it anymore. Like, what date and time is your appointment? see, I, cancel. OK, I won't create the event. So and then when the date and the time comes, she'll tell me. And to be honest, like, I don't even use that. My wife has probably been like my biggest um reminder of things but her life is more busier than mine's like she she's with my daughters and she takes them to dance um she keeps track of everything like there's just that like she's organized like that like she has a she has a notebook she's a notebook person too but she uses her notebooks in a very methodical way and she has lists to do lists cleaning lists shopping lists 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 like she just makes lists but it works because all the bills are always paid on time because she has the list and when she at when she when she's like, hey, you know, I, I need money to pay this bill. Like, hey, what are you gonna do? Like, hey, we need to bring in some money. I can say, hey, send me this list. And she'll she'll take a picture of her list and she'll send it to me. And then I, like now she has it on her phone. So she just sends me in a text message. And I'm like, oh, okay, we need, you know, money for this. And I can go to the brokerage account or I can, you know, go out and try to drum up some business or do like some quick client work or something like that. You know, stuff like that, team. <laughs> but that's notebooks. I've always had notebooks. So always keep a notebook. And also I have I have this um I have this graph paper that I use for for just like writing stuff down like super quick. I got this clipboard from the last job I worked at and I got the idea for the graph paper when I was working at Microsoft, right? So all the developers and engineers, right? Whenever you needed to do something, there was a room where you could go that has a whiteboard and the, or that you could just go grab a pad. They had all the pens and stuff you needed. So I thought that that was cool. So I just keep these, you know, I keep this one right behind my desk and then I've got a bunch over here. And whenever I need to write something down, I just, I know where I need to go to grab it. And that's that's pretty much that team here. I got a couple juggling balls. I've been learning to juggle. I don't know what the third ball is, though. It's probably under my bed or something. And I'm, I'm no good. I can only I can only get all three balls in the air and, and juggle them like like that for about six times. And they're all over the floor. But that's a good stress reliever. Um, whenever I'm sitting here and I get like, you know, inside of my head and maybe I start to worry, I feel anxious or something like that or, you know, my. You know, or I need to take a break or something like that. I'll just grab the balls and I'll stand up and I'll juggle. But I don't I don't I don't spend a lot of time in here juggling. But my wife recommended those. And they're my favorite. My fa one of my favorite. Well, two of my favorite colors, black and orange. They looks really good together. And so they make a good decoration, too. And they have a little story behind them when people ask, hey, what are those? Are those stress balls? And they, because they're like they're like little bean bags. And um, so, yeah, team, I've got a mug there that my daughter gave me. Best dad ever. Um, and then next to that, I got a salt lamp that my wife gave me. This is a salt lamp. You go buy one at Walmart. And it's actually, it actually tastes like salt. Like I, I don't lick it on a regular basis, but I've licked it a couple of times. This is real salt. Um, but that's cool. The bulb in there is gone out, so I don't turn it on. Maybe I'll replace that and turn it on. But again, like all this stuff is, is here because it makes me feel good. That's pretty much it, team. And if we move over here, you can't. You can't really see them, but I got a couple pictures. And if you watch like some of my tutorials, like when the code 365 startup lab, you can see them behind me up top. On the top, I have Seattle. And on the bottom, I have Chicago. And for me, like I came from Chicago, but now like Seattle's the closest, biggest city. I mean, I'm probably could find one up Tacoma or something like that. But Washington is known for Seattle and Illinois is, Illinois is known, for, known for Chicago. And to me, this is a big thing because in, Ch in Chicago, I got to experience a lot of cool stuff. My parents were cool, but I did grow up on the South Side. And I, I never thought in a million years that, you, and people say that, I never thought in a million years, you know, no, I, I, I never considered the fact that it was possible for me to go from Chicago all the way to living in Anchorage, Alaska, and then living in Washington and like Seattle's right there. And at one point I, I was in Seattle every day. Like when I go to work, I'd have to go to Seattle. 
Um, and so I started from the bottom and now I'm here, team. That's that's what this that's what this represents to me. And this decoration, I like to surround myself with stuff like that. And it makes it's you know, it's cool stuff background when I'm recording videos and stuff like that. So that's why I have these here. I got a couple cars here from my friend. Uh, one of my closest friends. And life is life is a trip, you know. I met him when I was in the army in like 2003, 2004. And and when we moved, when me and my wife moved into this house, and, and my my father-in-law bought the house and then he moved out and moved somewhere else. And then and then we moved in and he's become our landlord essentially. So we pay our rent to my father-in-law. Um but we moved in here and my friend Eddie. You know, he lives like right down the road. And I didn't, I didn't even know. I hadn't seen him in like probably like because he got out of the army and I was deploying. I was still in the army doing all this stuff. And um, and he uh, and I moved in and he lived right down the street. Go figure. Right. And he collects these Hot Wheels cars and he gives them out as gifts to people. And I was in his house one day. And I was like, hey, man, what are you doing? doing what are you doing? I was, it, it was his home office. I had never been in there. I had been to his house, you know, probably a handful of times, maybe, maybe you know, a dozen times or something like that. And we always hang out in the living room or the kitchen or the backyard. And I had never been in his home office. And I go in his home office. He got this. It's like a rack. It looks like a Walmart store. And he's got like a, hundreds of cars on this thing. And I said, dude, man, that's like super cool. And he goes, hey, take some cars. And I said, all right. So I took a, um, I got a Ford Focus RS. And this, I, I don't drive an RS, I drive a Ford Focus ST, uh, but I got like the top of the line. It's got like all the fancy bells and whistles in it, the heated seats and all kinds of stuff, team. Um, but the RS is essentially, I don't even know if you could buy a base model RS. I tried to, I wanted to trade my ST in for RS, but you can't, you can't buy them anymore. Like Ford doesn't sell them in America. But, um, but the, from what I could tell, all of my research and everything, the cars are exactly the same. The only difference is the RS has, it has more horsepower, um, about 50 more horsepower and it has, it's all wheel drive. And so it needs the, it needs the extra horsepower because it has the extra components for the, the other wheels. But, um, but this looks, my car is black, but this is essentially the same car. So I thought that was cool that he had one of those. And then, you know, I, every, everybody likes exotic cars. Me, I'm more of a Ferrari type of person. Um, well, at least that's the way it was when I was a kid. And now I've progressed to like the Maseratis and stuff like that. But, um, but you know, the, I, the Lamborghini is like something that, um, that, that a lot of people aspire to. And I would like to, you know, buy a Lamborghini one day. So I got that here. And these are just like little cool knickknacks and reminders um, of, of what I'm working towards and why I'm out here, you know, doing what I do, why I make these kinds of videos. It's just, hey, so you could get here. And I understand that the only way for me to get there is to help other people um, and mainly help other people using my my unique gift. I've tried to use other people's gifts. I've tried to be in sales. I've tried to be in contracting. I've tried to be in IT. I've tried to be like do all these, other, but none of those things were my thing team. Like this is, you know, being able to sit down and record a video um, or get on stage and talk to people and connect with them and inspire them and motivate them. That's what that's been my thing team. So, you know, at one point I figured I had to just, you know, take a leap, uh, and, and I learned that from Steve Arby. His story is super cool. Maybe I'll talk about that in a new video, in a, in a different video. Let me know in the notes below. And, you know, we can, I can, you know, talk about my philosophy on Steve Harvey and all that stuff. I've got this Mace Windu here. I got this from McDonald's, like, in 2000 and I don't know when, team. It, it was like 2004, 2005, like, way back when I first came to, to, uh, to Washington. So I've had this little Mace Windu action figure for nearly 20 years it's probably like 16 17 years now and uh, he's been with me through a lot of stuff like he i used to have him sit on my dashboard and because i was driving to and from work every day so he would like come you know with me and then the moment that i stopped driving like that i didn't have to drive to work i took him out of the car and i put him in here right and he sits there as a reminder of like hey i'm with you everywhere you go i'm looking over your shoulder um and you can do this man like you just got to this is it, right? So I, he's, he's right there looking over my shoulder. Um, and then my son, he's really into um, Five Nights at Freddy's. And so I've got this little Five Nights at Freddy's bear here. So just little things to remind me of, you know, of, of to, to remind me that, that, you know, this is what being here on earth is about, right? And I know some people are in, in horrible situations 
And, uh, you know, the, the, the best I could do is, is, is be the best person I can be and try to, and try to inspire as many people as possible. And maybe one of those people, if not myself, will, will do something to, that, that actually helps those people out of that situation team. And maybe somebody will see that and they'll come here and they'll go, man, like this guy, right? Like I'm on the South side of Chicago. My life is crappy. I was in a shootout yesterday and I turned on the news and nobody's talking about that. Right. There was a mass shooting at my school and nobody's talking about that. They're talking about this other stuff. Right. Nobody ever talks about there's people out there and they feel like, like they're left behind. Right. And I and I, I don't know how to con- I, I've, I've come so far that I feel like sometimes I don't know how to connect with those people. But maybe if I share the things that I've been through in my philosophy, um, then, you know, who knows? Who knows? So that's that's my whole thing. That's why I'm recording this video. Somebody asks about this stuff and I, I want people to know the truth. Like, it's uh, you know, th- this this stuff that I have here. Right. I didn't even buy it all in cash. Like it's on it's on a credit card, like a, a Discover card or an American Express or something. But I did it because it lights a fire under me. Like I have to make this this work. And so far, so good, team, you know. Um, but I, again, I don't recommend anybody do that. Like your story is your, your story. Your journey is your journey. You just, you got to pick your path and you got to get on it. Right. And, and, and you just got to make sure it's your path. If you're waking up every day and you don't like what you're doing, like you got to stop that team. Cause it's going to lead to all kinds of other bad stuff. It's going to lead to cancer and drug addiction and all kinds of stuff. Um, and so get to know yourself, get to know your thing and then just go. And just, you know, figure it out. Um, and I skipped some things over here. I just want to talk a little more about, like, I've got the RGB fans in here. Um, I've got two up front. I've got two up top. And I've got uh, one here. And these two fans here, they actually pull air up through a radiator. And that's what cools the, um, the, the, the it's a liquid cooling system. So the, the fans, they pull, they pull air through the radiator and then the liquid circuit circulates through the radiator and cools off and then it goes down and it cools the processor heats up the processor heats up that cool liquid and then it's pumped back up into the radiator and then these fans right it goes to the the cooling process so this is a liquid cooled loop of you know for the processor necessary probably not the processor came with a humongous uh a humongous fan and a heat sink on it. And the heat sink is just these little fins that come off the processor to disseminate the heat. And then the fan is used to like pull that heat away from the processor and also suck more uh, air into the heat sink in order to cool the processor and just keep the whole system cool. And actually the fan that came with the processor, it has a little RGB ring on it. I don't even use it. I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at the box. It's right there on the floor. Um, so again, all of this stuff isn't necessary. I saw other people with these setups, but you know, I figure like if I'm gonna do it, I might as well do it. Like because this is me, me. I'm spirituality, technology, computer science. I'm searching for something. I don't know what it is, but what you see here is the vision that you know from the first time I saw a computer up into the first time I could buy my first computer. Like all this stuff is the vision that I had in my head, team. I'm just I'm just letting you guys know. It took me a long time to make this thing a reality. It could have been a reality sooner, but I was off doing other things. I was off on a on a spiritual, mental, and physical voyage through the United States Army that has turned me into, I guess, the person I am today, team. Um, but that's I was off on that kind of mission. Here I got a whiteboard, and this whiteboard is super cool. It doesn't come in this exact form. So I'm going to break it down for you in case you guys want to build your own or do something with this. I bought, I, w- I was going to work one day. I was working at Microsoft. I was working in this office and there was a software development team contracted. We were all contracted and they were contracted to do some stuff like T-Mobile or something. And I got to talk into like the scrum master or, or whatever they call those, those guys. He like managed the whole project and every day he would have meetings and organize like the workflow and all this stuff. And I was talking to him and and so I got to know him just a little bit. And then one day I came and they had these whiteboards everywhere. I'm like, where did whiteboards come from? And I was looking at them and I said, dude, these are cool. And this is like a small enough whiteboard. I could put this in my house and move it around. So I, uh, I looked for the name on it. I don't know if this thing has a name on it, but I went on Amazon and I just looked around for, you know, a whiteboard like the one that they had. And when I got it, it, it had this little ring on the bottom and you like pull this ring and then you could spin the board like this. 
but the ring was, was, was crappy. It didn't work the way I wanted it to. So I went to, um, to Home Depot and I got these clamps and I put, I got some Gorilla Tape. And so you see these black things around the board. And so where the Gorilla Tape is, is it keeps the clamp from spinning. So what I can do is I can, I can set the board to where I want it to be. And then I can just grab one of these and I can clamp it in place and then it doesn't spin. And I have two of these. So I have one over here and I have, and so I can put these clamps anywhere. I can put one up here and then I could put one down here and it'll hold the board and keep it from spinning. And then of course, every whiteboard needs, you know, dry erase markers and the dry, there's only, the board spins but there's only one place to put the markers and my daughter, I have little kids. She'll come in and she'll grab the markers. And then like, before you know it, she's like drawing all over everything. The couch is covered in marker The you know, everything is just covered. And so I took, um, this right here is just a toilet paper roll, old toilet paper roll. And I, I taped it up here and I just, I just put some dry erase markers in there and I have another one up top to hold some more. And whenever I have an idea or I, I want to remember something, like if you look on it now, this is for, uh, for a video that I was going to do about the actual programming and data structures. And so I just write all this stuff down. Or if I have an idea, I'll just come here, write it down real quick or something I need to do. I'll write it down. Or maybe like, you know, this motivational quote, a reminder, you know, my wife asked me to do something like I just throw it on a whiteboard real quick. And then it's cool that it has two sides. I try to keep one side clean or at least with stuff that's like not important. Like there's nothing like super important up here. I got some stuff with some, with some scheduling things. Um, but this is not important. So what I can do is when I have an idea for something, I'll just erase all of this and I'll just go and I'll just write and I'll draw lines and I'll draw connections and all this stuff. And that's how I piece together a lot of these ideas that people hear me talk about. Like when I do the morning show on my YouTube channel and the live feed, like these ideas are just pouring out of me. And it's all stuff that I've experienced and that I've done before. Um, but some of that stuff um, was actually synthesized on this board. And I'll just write stuff down that I don't understand. And then I'll, you know, and now I'm trying to explain it to myself in a way that I understand and I'll race and I'll write again. Um, but yeah, this is a cool tool I have, but you don't need it, right? I don't use it. I don't use it every day, maybe once a week, you know, maybe a couple times a week or something like that. It's not this, it's not something that I have to have to, to do anything or make anything happen, but it's cool to have here. Um, because it reminds me of what this whole space is for also like, Hey team, this is a space you're an artist, you're a creator, you're a producer, um, you're a motivator, you're a speaker, right? And when you're in this space, like your mind needs to be like that. And that is, that's me. Um, and it's who I am as a person and as a, as an individual. So when I cut, this is like my layer, like you, every criminal has a layer, every, uh, hero has a layer or someplace they go to. For me, this is it. And always in my mind, looking at all of this stuff every day, always in my mind is the next level. Where's the next level I wanna take this, right? Go from this space here to a big room and then to maybe a whole building and then to maybe, you know, a whole compound or something like that. And not necessarily like the whole compound is all white full of computers and stuff, stuff like that. But being able to expand, you know, my space, you know, to, to, to be most comfortable for me and my family, and then my friends that, that I want to come, that I want to spend time with the people that I meet, that I encounter, um, and not, not to, not to show off or anything like that team, but to just, you know, to be, to be surrounded by like-minded people, um, where we can exchange ideas. Right. And so that's, that's, I created the, I created this space for that as well. I do it via YouTube, um, on a near daily basis now. And, um, I will. All right, team, the, uh, the battery died. So I had to switch that out, but that's, that's pretty much all of this stuff team. But before, before I get off, I, I know a lot of people, they're going to come and they're going to see this video and they're watching it just for, to see, you know, another cool setup, right? That's, 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 that's the deal, right? And you, you know, I titled the video like I do and I get the thumbnail and all that stuff, another cool setup for people to watch. But, um, but if you're still watching to this point, I just want to convey a message to you. Like maybe somebody's watching this video and they're like, cool, man, I want this stuff right here, team, you know? And I'm, I'm telling you like this stuff is just stuff. There's a lot of people out here who go to work and they're doing jobs they hate for people that they don't like so they can make some money so they can buy stuff like this. And if you're in that situation, you'll get the stuff and it'll make you feel good for a little bit. But eventually it just becomes another thing in your life.
Um, and for some people, it becomes a burden. You know, like there's credit card debt associated with this stuff. Like I got to pay a credit card bill every month. Um, it takes up space in my room. Right. I mean, whatever it is, you have to move and then you got to move all of this stuff. Um, there's just a lot of stuff associated with it. So I, I, I try to tell people like, it's cool if you can afford it. Like if you want it, like it's, it's a goal, like go out, do what you got to do and get it team. But there's more important things to life. Um, and, and when I say that, I'm not talking, we I believe we're all here for a reason. And again, if you're still watching this video, maybe, maybe this is the universe calling you, the universe telling you like, Hey man, I just don't want to be like everybody else out here who shows you like this glitzy glamorous stuff. And, and, you know, you're, you're out here working for it and, and you're not able to get it. You're struggling. Like, you know, like it just seems like nothing goes your way. Everything just sort of falls apart. My experience has been, team, that things fall apart so they can they can fall together. Like there's something in your life that goes bad because the universe is telling you like, hey, maybe this is where you're supposed to be. This is what you're supposed to be doing. And we we as human beings, we're small. This is a very big planet. It's a very big universe. There's a bunch of stuff going on that we don't really understand. And there are people who spent their entire lives studying it. Right. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi, not Mahatma Gandhi, the Buddha uh, and a whole bunch of other gurus and spiritual leaders and all this stuff um and just through me studying all this stuff for pretty much my whole life i've realized that everybody pretty much they're saying the same thing at the end of the day like figure out figure out who you are and what your thing is and go do that thing and everything else will come if you're a good person and you treat people with respect and and, and you treat people like you want to be treated you treat you treat you know that's pretty much it. Just treat other people like you want to be treated and have a good have a good heart and and make it make an effort to just bring other people value in some kind of way. Um, even if it's just a smile, like some people, they just they can't even smile. Like you just give somebody a smile that may change their day. You don't know. Somebody may be on their way to jump off a bridge and then and then you pass them by and you smile and you say, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Right. Like, you know, it, it maybe sometimes you see somebody who has a bad look on their face. Hey, good morning. Right. It, it looks like it looks like you're going through it, man. I feel you. You know, it it'll be better because you can make it better. It, they might not jump off the bridge. Not only that, they might not jump off the bridge. They may go run for city council and then mayor and then become the president of the United States and then change the, the whole world. They may go start a company in 20 years from now. Right. They make a product that that completely changes your life or it helps you in a bind um, when you needed it most. I mean, who knows? Right. I mean, the, the world, the universe is this crazy place, this crazy place. Maybe maybe somebody is going to, like, commit suicide and, and you and you're nice to them and, and 10 years down the road, your house is on fire and they're the firefighter that puts out the fire. And if you never had a smile, your house would have burned to the ground, team. So I just tell I like to tell people um, that it's going to get tough. Like life is tough. My life has been tough. Your life has been tough. Everybody's life has been tough. But anybody can have all this is just stuff It's stuff It's stuff. But it's stuff that came from people who are doing things that they love. Right. There's no way you sit down and you figure out how to make a computer monitor if you don't have some sort of passion for it. You can't no matter how much money somebody pays you like you have to have something inside of you to do it. I can't make a computer monitor. I, if I had to, maybe I would, but I don't have to like somebody else has done it and they've done it because somebody along their life inspired them and motivated them to go off and be whatever it is they were meant to be team. And so like, if, if you, if you go, if you figure out who you are and what it is you want to be. And you set your sights on that thing and getting to where you want to be. And you're nice to the people around you. And, 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 and you just operate in this world from a place of gratitude and a grace of, and a, and a place of hopefulness and faith and, and hard work and effort. People will go out and they don't even know you and they will build the world that you want to live in. I don't know the guy that made this sign. I don't know the people that made this desk or this keyboard or these speakers, this monitor, None of this stuff. I don't know any of these people. I don't know the people that built this house, but apparently they did it all for me, team. I'm your biggest fan, the real Casadero. 
This is my office. That's my philosophy on life. This is my desk setup. I hope it inspires you. I hope it motivates you. Um, if the lighting sucks, so what? Who cares? Um, <laughs> thanks for hanging out with me here, team. Um, and go out there and be great. If you like the channel, you know, subscribe. Right? That, that'd be super cool. I'm trying to get to 10,000 before the end of this year, team. Let's do it. We're going to get out here. We're going to get after it. Um, I want to keep continue sharing stuff like this. I'm going to continue sharing my progression. But most important is I want you guys to share your progression. Just come back to the channel wherever so often. Watch a video. Leave a comment. Join the Code365 Startup Lab. Get in the Discord channel, right? I want to see people grow. Because like I said before, I know if I can inspire, motivate people, help them become the people that they, that they want to be, they'll build the world that I want to live in, team. And they'll build the world you want to live in, too. Anything you want, somebody else has got it. It's, 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 either, it's either money in their pocket or, 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 or their work or their network of people or, 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 or an idea. We just don't know. We just don't know, team. I'm your biggest fan of Real Casadero. I'll see you guys in the next video.